This video is brought to you by Adam Sharp School. Adam Sharp School hosts one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos, and it is trusted by 150 plus companies, including Apple, Comcast, JP Morgan Chase. A lot of my students work with these amazing companies and check out see these amazing reviews from some of my students. I mean, in reality, there are like 16,000 plus reviews, but you can definitely check out a few of them over here. So on Adam Sharp School, you can find a list of a lot of different courses. You can get those courses by buying individual course, and you can see the list over here. I mean, this is just a crazy list because it's, it just has so many different courses available, full stack iOS development using Swift and Vapor, MV design pattern, you know, Swift data bootcamp, testament development, create ML, reality kit, and a lot more. So definitely check out these courses. You can buy them individually, or you can simply go ahead and sign up for the membership. That is what most people do. 22 comprehensive courses, over 130 hours of content, and I keep adding more videos, more tutorial, and more courses. Another thing to keep in mind are the workshops. Now these are live workshops hosted over Zoom and these are amazing workshops because these are very hands-on workshops. It's not like I'm gonna show you some slides. We're gonna dive into the code. We're gonna check out the code. We're gonna run it and you will get a, get a GitHub repository with all the code and I will be every step of the way helping you out, figure out all the problems. So our next workshop is on introduction to server side surf using vapor and you can see the pricing very accessible only fifty dollar for a workshop then we have a swift data fundamentals workshop and we also have testing workshop so definitely check out these resources on awesomesharp.school now let's go back to the video now let's go ahead and focus on adding a new reminder to a list to a selected list this means that we're looking at the my list view because my list view displays all the list. You can see that we are running a for loop over here and we're using the my list cell view to display a particular list, the title of the list or the name of the list along with the icon. But right now, if you look at this, it doesn't really go anywhere. Like if I click on this green list, purple list, orange list, it doesn't really take me anywhere to allow me to add a reminder. So what we want to do is when you click on the cell, we want to go to a different screen, okay? So how can we do that? Well, that will be done by using a navigation link. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a navigation link. And this is part of the iOS 16. So make sure that you're using iOS 16 or above. And we're going to be using the overload function, which contains the value and the label. So the value is the one that will be transferred to the navigation destination, you'll see in a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and simply say value will be my list. And the label is whatever you want to see on the, on the screen. So that will be our VSTAT, there we go. Okay. Okay, great. So this is fine. And if I refresh this, it doesn't really allow me to go anywhere yet because I haven't really implemented the navigation destination portion of it. So I also need to do that part. So I'm gonna go inside the for each over here. And first of all, I'm just gonna go ahead and say scroll content background. And this will set the visibility for the view. So this is kind of like a mandatory and just I'm just gonna set it to hidden, okay? And we're gonna look into now the navigation destination. So scroll, scroll content background is mostly related to if the background color is different. Uh, so we may or may not need it over here, but I'm just gonna put it there for now. Navigation destination, where we have to define a for, meaning for what type. And the type that we're providing is the my list. So this is where we're gonna get my list dot self that's the type and the destination we're going to get the my list and this is where we are going to say that okay where do you want to go let's say that if we want to go to a text view which we don't but it's always a good idea to try out these small things 
and see if they work. So this means that we are saying that when I click on any of these my list cell view, I should be taken to a text view. And there we go. It actually works perfectly fine. Now, we don't really want to go to a text view. We want to go to a different view, and I will call it my list detail view. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a my list detail view. My list detail view. Now, you might be wondering that why are we creating a my list detail view? Why can't we just take the user directly to the reminder list view? Well, my list detail view is going to act like a container view. So this is going to display the reminder list view as well as a button to add a new reminder. So we are composing our views into multiple views. So what will be inside this my list detail view? Well, we're going to start very simple. So it's not really going to be much. We're just going to go ahead and say vStack. Okay. And we need to create some sort of a, a button so that we can add a reminder. Okay. But before that, the my list detail view needs to know which list you are adding it to. Right. So this means that you must pass in the my list. That is a requirement. If you want to add a reminder to a list, we must know the list. So that's why we're passing it. I'm going to go over here also in the my list Xcode preview and going to say preview data dot my list. So this means that we're just giving it some sort of a hard coded information. Let's go ahead and take a look at the my list detail view. It kind of looks like this. There's really nothing displayed at this point. Next up, what we want to do is we want to create the button, which is going to allow us to add a reminder. So let's go ahead and create the button. You can see that the button is triggering the property, setting the property open add reminder, and we don't have that property. So let's go ahead and add that state variable. And we should be able to see at least some hints of the button. So there is our button right there. Eventually, this button will be moved down a little bit, but that's fine for now. And somewhere over here, we will display the list. Display list of reminders. So you can add a placeholder over here so you know that this is where you will eventually display the list. Not right now, but eventually. So when we set the open add reminder to be true, what we really want to happen is we want to show some sort of an alert. So this is how we are adding our reminder. We are asking the user in the alert box that what do we want to do? What do they want to do? Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and say a new reminder. Presented will be based on open add reminder. And now finally the actions. Actions means that, well, over here we are going to go ahead and return different kind of views that you want. So obviously we need some sort of a text field. So let's go ahead and add a text field. Now this text field depends on the title property. So let's go ahead and add the title state variable so we can capture that. We also need some sort of a button to cancel. So in the alert box, we can add a button. That's just to cancel, but we need another button, which will be the done button. Meaning this is when a person is saying that, okay, you know, everything is working fine. All right. Again, with the done button, we can do some sort of a validation. If you want, that's perfectly fine. We can validate that. Uh, let's see if we can actually validate it something like this. If we can say it disabled and the same exact if form valid. So if it's not valid, you will not disable it. And let's go ahead and add a is form valid property, which is simply going to check for the title. If I click on this one, you can see right now, well, you can see already it's not even appearing. So that's another issue. Let's see if it appears right now. Okay, so maybe we cannot do this with the title or maybe there's a different way. Uh, so I wouldn't use it like that. So I would just use it sim simply like this. It's form valid. Okay. So if the form is valid, this is where we will save 
the reminder to my list. We haven't really done that, but this is where we will do that. Let's go back to our my list view. Instead of the text view, now we can send in my list detail view, passing in the my list. So this will at least allow us to show my list detail view. So let's go ahead and click on the green list. And there we go, we are actually going to the my list detail view. Great, right? Okay, so that is working out pretty good. The other thing that I really want to do is when we go to the list, um, it will be a good idea to show or display the name of the list. So if I simply go ahead and do that, over here, I can say my list dot name so that when I'm going to that particular page, I can now see the green list. You can see right there, it's green list. If I go to the purple list, it's showing purple list and so on. So at least the names are being displayed, all right? Uh, probably we're gonna use a different one. So let's go ahead and use the navigation there's also bar title, but looks like it's uh, renamed to navigation. Okay, so I would think we were using it correctly. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is good. Looks like it's working. Looks like the ad reminder is actually popping up on the cancel, it goes away, but we still haven't figured out how to actually add or save a reminder to a particular list. And this will be the job of our reminder service the reminder service is going to save the reminder. So this means that we need to jump into our reminder service. And currently the reminder service doesn't really have any function that will allow you to save a reminder to a list. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a function and I will call it save reminder to my list. Now there are a couple of different things we need. We need the my list, we, meaning we need the list where you are adding the reminder and we need the title of the reminder because that's kind of like the only thing for the reminder that we are storing. Now, if you're wondering, hey, what about the date? What about the date time? What about, uh, you know, the reminder date, reminder time, and all those things? We're gonna get to that later on. That's more like an updating a reminder to attach different things to it, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and create the reminder. And this will be using the reminder with context. We can simply use view context and assign the reminder title, which will be reminder title. You can see the reminder does have other properties. It's not like it doesn't have all of those properties. You can see that we have properties like it's completed, reminder date, reminder time, but we're not really going to set over here because we don't have reminder date, reminder time. So I'm gonna say my list dot add to reminders and then adding a reminder and then just saving it. Now, the problem over here is that there is no function called add to reminders on the my list. Since we said that we will be implementing the my list manually, and we did right here, it doesn't come with any functions. So there are no functions in our class in anywhere that is going to allow you to add to list but we can do that, we can add it ourselves. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add these functions, which are usually added just by default for you, but since we were, we're adding it manually, these functions were not included. So I will just add them manually right there. And if you don't add them, this is what the Xcode was adding for you by default when it was generating the code. But since we said that we will not be generating the code because of UI color part that we did, uh, we have to add this function manually. Not a big deal. I mean, it, this function looks pretty simple to add, right? So we're just adding these functions manually. And if you're wondering that, well, how did you get the name of these functions? Well, if you generate a particular entity by auto-generating it, but not manually, but allowing the Xcode to generate it, it's going to create these functions and you can just copy these functions over and change the names. And that's what I did. Okay, so going back over here, now hopefully we will have the add to reminders. 
And this is the function that now we can call, we can add. So let's go back to my list details view. And over here, we are going to say try reminder service dot save my list. No, save reminder to my list. And I'm just going to go ahead and send in the my list and the reminder title. That's the only thing that we're actually saving. And for the catch, for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and say error.localized description. And that's it. All right. So this is going to allow us to add or save a reminder to a particular list. I don't think it will allow me to type something over here because my Xcode has some issues. Let's go ahead and see. Oh, I can actually type in. So that's always fun. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this through. Green list, uh, new reminder, I'm going to say uh, buy groceries and done. It doesn't really display. Eventually, we would like to display our reminders over here. Right now, we are not really displaying anything. That's not a big deal. It will come later on. Uh, let's go ahead and add another reminder. You can see that the name of the reminder is still there, so probably we need to clean it up. I'm just going to go ahead and say reminder green list 2. And going back to the purple list, I will say purple reminder 1. And I'm naming it like this so that you know that these reminders are added to a very specific list. Let's go ahead and add a couple of more. Okay. Still, it's not really displaying anything. So that's the part that we need to still figure out. And we're going to figure it out in the next lecture.